It was the definition of a slow night at Virtual City Hall in Barrie. No lively discussions or debates tonight, but a great chance to honor some of Barrie's historic buildings and a suite of motions from general committee were passed into existence. Some uh, announcements and uh, discussion around that as well. Here's what you missed. First up was Heritage Awards. To buildings in Barrie with outstanding history, character, ones that have been around for a long time. 62 William Street um, is a historic home with a rich history that was recognized. Set on the corner of William and Holgate in the Allendale section of Barrie, Patton House is a double-walled, orange-brick, vernacular Victorian construction with a wraparound veranda and balcony. It retains many original features, including bargeboard trim, oak floors, 12-inch baseboards, and old-growth pine pocket doors. A rare rosette window overlooking the porch and stained glass transoms over the second floor interior doorways make this non-designated heritage home unique in its neighborhood. Next up, uh, 113 Coll Collier Street is a beautiful uh, Gothic-styled house with a special connection to Mayor Lehman. So records on 113 Collier Street, which has no formal or common name, are unclear as to when the home was built. Based on the classic Gothic architecture, it is believed that the home is between 125 and 145 years old. I have to indulge in a moment of personal connection here. Uh, until 12 years ago, this was the location for my family's business. And that four windowed bay uh, was my dad's office. Uh, so I know this building extremely well, lest anybody think there's anything here. Um, uh, I'm not involved in selecting the winners, winners of the Heritage Awards. I just get to be here for the awards ceremony. Um, but certainly it's been a huge pleasure as somebody who has an emotional investment in that building to um, see that the new owners, um, uh, uh, MHBC Planning, who uh, have continued to maintain uh, this, uh, this beautiful office. So and lastly, Trinity Anglican Church. It was built in 1864, and it's been used by Barry's Anglican community ever since. The committee selected Trinity Anglican Church for a Heritage Award, as it is an excellent example of how continued use of heritage buildings and diligent stewardship can enrich our community by providing a tangible connection to the past. And uh, I do have some fond memories of uh, going to church here while I was young, uh, mostly just on Christmas, but uh, it's a treacherous hill to get up in the winter, uh, as I'm sure many people will know. And I'd encourage uh, everyone who's walking around the downtown to take a stroll up the hill because there are some lovely views of our downtown from up there. Now all general committee's decisions last week were passed today without discussion or debate. I'll save you the time by saying check out last week's recap or council's um, official minutes to find out all that was discussed last week. Direct motions just included a um, amendment to a curbside pilot program. That an additional four on-street parking spaces be converted to curbside pickup spots in addition to the eight approved by City Council as part of the downtown curbside pickup pilot program. That the location of the additional curbside pickup locations be determined jointly by the Business Improvement Association, BIA, the Transit and Parking Strategy and Economic and Creative Development Departments and the Enforcement Services Branch to ensure spaces are distributed evenly throughout the downtown core in a manner that supports current health protocols. Council voted to approve that expansion. Um, downtown Barry will get those four spots um, until Barry hits orange zone of COVID response or when patio season starts up again. There were no presentations tonight, um, but here's some announcements and questions that city councillors brought forward. Councillor Kungle uh, mentioned a change to Patios Everywhere program in Barrie. Um, I caught in a circulation uh, list uh, happy news that staff are looking at intending to do the Patios Everywhere program, so much broader than the downtown. was hoping you could share publicly if there's any information, um, business owners looking to have a patio um, can appreciate about where to find that information or when that uh, call for 
uh, intent to have a patio might occur. Thank you, Mayor Lehman, uh, through you to Councillor Kunkel. Yes, staff are working on that. We should have a, a memo back on the circulation list um, in the next several weeks. Um, staff and Economic Development um, uh, Enforcement Services and uh, Development Services are just working out the details. It'll be very similar to last year and um, uh, will apply uh, across the city and there will be um, forms to fill out and uh, a dedicated staff team to assist uh, where necessary. And there were um, some upcoming community consultations as well. Mayor Lehman, I just wanted to take this opportunity to share with all of you and with the public that the Cornerstone to Recovery Women's Treatment Center. Um, the contract is signed, the drawings are done, uh, the money is exchanged where it needs to go, and the uh, opening is hopefully this July, so July 2021. It will have 12 treatment beds, six uh, residential, uh, all of them are residential beds, but also six transitional housing beds. Also, Councillor Ilwin uh, mentioned that a vigil for those who have passed due to the toxic um, opioid crisis is set for February 15th. And Barry Community Media uh, just spoke to the organizers of that event. Stay tuned for that interview in the coming days. And Mayor Lehman had some great news about the massive uh, Dunlop Street redevelopment project. So I'm pleased to announce the City of Barry's uh, streetscape project on Dunlop Street, led by the Infrastructure Department, has won an award, the Economic Developers Council of Ontario Award of Excellence in the Urban Building Initiatives category. He also spoke a little bit about the city's uh, wastewater analysis program. Um, that's used to detect the COVID-19 virus and variants of the virus as well in the city's wastewater. Mayor Lehman also mentioned the um, events this past week, um, an incident involving police and a 20-year-old man on Dunlop Street, and how the investigation will go forward. Ontario Provincial Police will be conducting the investigation into the uh, Dunlop Street arrest and the conduct of uh, Barrie police officers that took place on Thursday, February 4th. Uh, the OPP Professional Standards Unit will be conducting the investigation and anyone who was present at the time of that occurrence uh, is asked to contact the OPP at 1-888-310-1122. That's 1-888-310-1122. He also mentioned how the recently announced COVID-19 restrictions in Ontario might play out in Barrie so far. Um, but certainly the positive news that Ontario the stay-at-home order will be ending, uh, and in our region that date is supposed to be Tuesday of next week. Um, we will hear uh, apparently later in the week uh, what level of the color-coded framework we will go back into. That depends, <clears throat> excuse me, that depends on public health metrics like caseload and percent positivity and the spread of the virus. Uh, a couple of things I will note that were announced today because they've been of considerable interest as well in the community. The province has announced that businesses will reopen with capacity limitations uh, that are based on uh, the, the, the capacity of their establishment. Um, what that appears to mean, and I say appears because we, we, we don't have all the details yet, uh, but it means a more level playing field because smaller uh, businesses will be able to open uh, with 25% um, capacity. And that's pretty much that. It was an uneventful night. Council won't be meeting next week, um, but the week after due to the family week holiday. For the full video of Council, see the caption below this video or visit Barry City Hall on YouTube. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next City Council meeting.